Hi, thank you so much for joining us for huh. the upcoming. Thanks for um, us. I'd like to ask both of you a question first. Um, you can start with you, Todd. What got you into filmmaking? Oh, what got me into filmmaking? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I arrived late in the game. I was in college, uh, and I just had a wonderful professor. I actually wanted to be a film critic, uh, so <laughs> took a bunch of film appreciation courses. And uh, I'm dating myself, but uh, the program had some film cameras. Uh, ironically, uh, some of the same cameras that uh, they were shooting in Mission Control, the RES uh, cameras or some old Bolex, you know, Rec 16s. But um, once I got into more of the criticism and, you know, uh, theory aspects of filmmaking, um, uh, I, I didn't like it as much as, you know, the actual doing. Uh, and I just had some very encouraging uh, professors that... Uh, kind of showed me a window of, you know, uh, that it was possible, but I wasn't exposed to it, you know, growing up other than, you know, going down to the cinemas and, you know, <laughs> watching films. Uh, but, yeah, that got me into it, and I started a student film. Uh, it was a documentary about a guy um, that, uh, a mentally handicapped guy that was uh, in the town I grew up in, uh, in Ohio. And, um uh, it took about four or five years to make. It was, you know, the transition from film. We started on film and we went to video by the end of it, so, or digital. Um, so, it, but it just, I loved it, you know, the collaborative medium of it and working with, you know, people. And in fact, to this day, you know, that was 25 years ago. And that was, um, you know, I'm still working with the same, well, the same team. Incredible. And you, Stephen, what got you into filmmaking? Well, I, I, uh, I've been editing films since I was about 14. Um, I had my own editing equipment, etc., and uh, or software. Uh, in about 2005, uh, I was at college and I saw the Cassini Huygens um, space probe landing on Titan, which really inspired me because I was quite a space enthusiast. So I ended up making a, a, a documentary about about that landing and the Destiny scientists' uh, stories. Yeah. Um, but that also got me very interested in the archive side of things, particularly the NASA archive, which is obviously quite a big, important part of Apollo 11. And yeah. so, yeah, that's probably kind of a short summary of where, where <laughs> yeah, we are. So everyone has to start somewhere. Um, how did you both feel when you found out about that incredible treasure trove of footage that just nobody else was going to get a chance to see? What was running through your mind, Todd? Well, Stephen got the email. We actually ah. found out via email. Uh, he read it before I did and called me, um, okay. which was unusual because we usually just com com communicated between, um, you know, email and Skype or whatever. <laughs> and, but he actually called my cell phone. I'm walking to work, and uh, um, <laughs> it was I've I've never seen him or heard him that excited before, um, and rightfully so. I mean, it was an email that was just you know um, it was pretty it was a pretty boring email uh, in retrospect, but. In the middle of it was this, uh, um, there was all these bolded words and explanation points about, and I think the line was, you know, this has the potential to change your project creatively. Um, but we still didn't know. We didn't know exactly what was on them. Uh, the reels themselves, back then it was only, I think, 50 or 60 reels had been identified, and that number would rise significantly by the end of the project. But back then, um, the, some of the cans just had uh, the words Apollo 11 on them. If you were lucky, it had a date. If you were really lucky, it might have had a, you know, some shot list. Uh, but right. we didn't really know uh, what what was on them until uh, we brought them up to our facility in New York, our post production house, and you know, put them on a scanner and you know, took a look at them. I mean, what got me so excited was uh, partly because I, a few years ago, I worked on the restoration of a classic NASA film called Moonwalk One. And our understanding had always been it, this was a sort of art house film that NASA commissioned for the. Uh, to celebrate the launch of Apollo 11, and they got the best um, cinematographers of their day to, to shoot this, um, which is the material that's um, ended up in it's Apollo incredible. 11. But the uh, our understanding had been that that material had been destroyed. So it's like, oh, oh so it has, it, oh, so it does exist. Or you kind of instinctively knew that that's what it was. <laughs> and so it's like, it's this, it's, it's, it's this thing where you have some good news, you want to share it with someone, and. I think that's why. Like, well, he hasn't replied within two two minutes of the email coming in. I need a reaction. Must, I need to share this yeah, with someone. Yeah, it's been mind blowing to just suddenly have all of this incredible footage for, for what you were trying to do. Um, Stephen, what is your favourite sequence in Apollo Eleven? Um, it's the lift off uh, and rendezvous scene when the lunar module Eagle lifts off the moon and comes into dock with 
Michael Collins is in the command module, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin are a pilot, Neil Armstrong's piloting the lunar module. And Michael Collins filmed this scene from the command module in one long shot and at first you don't see it and then it slowly, slowly approaches it. And the way Todd's edited this and the music by Matt Morton uh, and the audio, it, I find it very moving and it's like a ballet, these two spacecraft coming together. Um, and Todd, your favorite. favorite scene? My favorite scene is, uh, you know, I have a lot of them, but um, the tops for me, uh, by a small margin, is uh, <laughs> the suiting up shots. Um, in the beginning, it's, you know, you really see the emotion on their faces. Um, and you, uh, you just see, I feel like, all of us reflected in, in their faces. You know, it's just this uh, incredible responsibility um, on what, you know, they were going to do on behalf of humanity. And I always find it incredible. And finally, a question again for both of you. Uh, we'll start with you, Stephen. Who are your idols in filmmaking and documentary making? I don't really have one specific. I think you're kind of uh, putting me on the spot a bit there. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I don't really think of anyone in particular. Um, I like. I, I like a lot of the all obviously all archival films such as um, Senna and Amy. Mm -hmm. I would say they were quite a big inspiration, perhaps on. Yeah. Um, because it's become vogue, I think, to do this sort of archive storytelling. So yeah, I'll say that. I'll That's go with fine. that one. <laughs> Todd. Um, wow, well, we could be here all day. Uh, <laughs> all, I think like modern people. Um, I'm re I really love the films of like Godfrey Reggio, who did like Conan Scotsy and um, uh, did, you know uh, latest film Visitors. Uh, I worked with Philip Glass. Kind of my working relationship with my music composer Matt Morton, who I've known forever, uh, was just very similar. Um, you know, and I love, um, you know, all the formalist masters working today, like Denny Villeneuve and David Fencher is incredible. Um, you know, I think, uh, um, you know, even Christopher Nolan, uh, you know, we've joked that, you know, we were making Dunkirk in space. Uh, and I think, <laughs> That's a great uh, tagline. you know, as far as large format filmmaking, um, you know, he's, uh, he's the tops as far as uh, that. And obviously there's been so many, you know, greats that have embraced it, P.T. Anderson, Tarantino and the like. Fantastic.